Hello everyone and welcome back. As SQL developers, we all have made some obvious and some not so obvious mistakes while writing a SQL code. Today we are going to take a look at one such SQL query that contains 5 logical errors that might affect our results and we are going to see how we can correct those errors. Our requirements are very simple and are based on the table employees that contains some employee data regarding the department of the employee, the salary, the hire date, the manager and the base rates and premium rates for the employee. And then we have another table that we're going to join on called the department table that just contains the department name related to the department IDs. Now our requirement is very simple and straightforward. We want a list of all employees from the employees table whose manager ID is not equal to 5. We also want to extract the department names if the employee belongs to a department ID 1, 2 or 3. Next, we want to calculate the monthly salary for the employee and we are assuming that the salary in the employee's table is an annual salary figure. Then we want to calculate a total rate based on the sum of the base rate and premium rate for the employee, which is an hourly rate for that employee. Next, we want to calculate a salary flag, which is based on the salary and the hire date. So if the salary is greater than 50,000 and hire date is greater than 1st of January 2016, we set it to 2. If the salary is greater than 50,000, then we set it to 1, else we set it to 9. So the SQL code that we have written to achieve all these requirements is the code that is shown here on the screen. And there are five logical errors within this single SQL query. So if you would like to try to identify them on their own, then you can pause the video for a second. And this is the employee data here on the screen. And this is the department data. And you can try to identify those five mistakes. In this video, we are going to identify together the four logical errors in the SQL query and see how to address them. And if you are able to identify the fifth error, why don't you put it down in the comments below and tell us how we can address that error. So let's proceed with our first requirement. The first requirement is to select all the records from the employees table where the manager ID is not equal to 3. So we write the select statement selecting all the records from the employees table and we put a filter condition manager ID is not equal to 3. Moving on to a second requirement which is to pull all the department names if the employee ID belongs to department ID 1, 2 or 3. To do that, we implement a left join with the department table on employee.departmentid equal to department.departmentid. Since we need to pull the department name, we are going to include the department name in a select clause. Now, if we execute just this part of my query, I can see the employee name and the department name. Now my requirement is to pull the department name only if the department ID belongs to department ID 1, 2 or 3. So I'm going to add a clause over here saying and department ID and let's put the alias name dep.departmentid in 1, 2 or 3 and execute this query. Now do you see any problem with the query till now? We saw that when we added the filter on the department ID, some of the records got dropped. But our requirement here is to select all the records from the employee table. So what have we done wrong over here? The error in this code is one of the most commonly made errors while writing the SQL code. So we were right in understanding that if we want all the records from the employee table, we need to use a left join. But after implementing a left join, we put a condition in the WHERE clause on the department ID, which actually converted this left join into an inner join. So if I just replace the left join with the inner join and execute this query, I'm going to get the same results. So here we need to understand the difference between the WHERE clause and the AND clause. When you want to perform a left join and filter on the data values 
of your write table, you need to include your filter condition after you define your key using the on keyword. So on employee.department ID is equal to department.department ID and department.department ID in one, two, three. Now, if you execute this query, you will see the difference. Now you see that two more records have been included, which are showing us the department names as nulls because the department ID did not belong in 123. So just to check that, let's pull the department ID from the employee table as well and execute. So you will see that the department ID for this record is four. That's why we did not pull a department name for this record but we still wanted the employee record to show up in our output results and that's why our left join was needed. Let's move on to our next requirement. The next requirement is to calculate the monthly salary. So to calculate the monthly salary, what we are going to do is we are going to simply divide the annual salary by 12. So 12 are the number of months and we should be getting a monthly salary. So this is what we have written to get the monthly salary. After executing the SQL query, we see that a new column has been added. It's the monthly salary column and it has been calculated by dividing the annual salary by 12. Now, if you do this calculation and divide 55,000 by 12, the actual amount that you should have got should have been 4583.33. So what we can observe here is that it has provided us only the integer part of the output and not the decimal amount, which is what we needed if we want to calculate an exact amount. To achieve that, a simple fix is simply to cast your column as a float and then execute your query and you will get the correct results. So now, if you want to format it a little bit, because there are too many decimal places here, we can just convert it, the output, or cast it to what decimal length that we want, and execute our query. Now our next requirement is to sum up base rate and premium rate columns to come up with a total rate column. Now what we can observe here is that these two are string columns and they have a dollar symbol prefixed to them. So we need to remove that and then we can add up these values. And now we need to remove the dollar sign. So the different ways to achieve that, you can do a substring, but what I'm going to do is use a replace. So I'm going to replace the dollar sign here with an empty string. And the same logic I'm going to apply to the premium rate to get rid of the dollar sign. So now I have replaced the dollar signs. I'm summing them up to get a total rate. And now let me execute this query. Okay, so we have got something in the total rate. Let's just include the base rate and the premium rate to see if a calculation fetched us the right results. And here is the total rate that we calculated by summing up the base rate and the premium rate column. Now, what you observe here is that it doesn't appear to be right. What has happened is it has actually concatenated the two values after removing the dollar signs from them. So 45 plus 0, it has made it as a string 450, 40 plus 20. So instead of summing them up numerically, it has concatenated. It treated them as string values and concatenated them. So here now just looking at the output, we know what might be the problem. The problem is that these two were considered as string values and the plus operation just took it to be a concatenation and concatenated those strings. So what we need to make sure here is that we do a proper data type conversion. So let's assume that the rates can only be integer values. So we can just quickly convert each of these values into integers and then try to perform any numerical calculation on them. So I'm going to execute it again. And now you will see that the results that you have got are the correct results. So three logical errors so far. Let's go and see what is the next requirement. 
The next requirement is to set a salary flag based on the value of the salary and the hire date. So salary greater than 50,000 and hire date greater than 1st of January 2016, then we set it as 2. If salary is just greater than 50,000, the hire date condition is not fulfilled, we set it to 1, otherwise we set it to 9. So to achieve that, we wrote a case statement as you can see over here. So case. When it is greater than 50,000, we set it to 1. When both of our conditions are satisfied, we set it to 2. Otherwise, we set it to 9. Now, let's just include our higher date as well and then check our result. Let's check this first record. Based on our condition, the salary is greater than 50,000, so that condition is met. The higher date is also greater than 1st of January 2016, so that condition is also met. So his flex should have been 2, but it has been set to 1. Okay, let's check the other record. The next one has a um, salary greater than 50,000, true. And the higher date greater than 2016. No, that's not true, right? So he, his flag has been set to 1, which is right. For the next record, again, the salary is greater than 50,000. The higher date is also greater than 1st of January 2016, but the salary flag has been set to 1. So what has happened here that in none of the scenarios, for none of the records, the flag has been set to 2, whereas we do have a couple of records satisfying that condition. For a case statement, as soon as the first true condition is met, it exits the statement and outputs the result. So for all these records where the salary is greater than 50,000, so all these records, the first condition here becomes true. And as soon as this condition becomes true, the case statement sets an output of the value 1, which is the output for this statement, and exits it, exits the statement and does not go and evaluate the second criteria that we have written over here. So it does not happen that it sets it to 1, then it goes and evaluates this condition as well, and then just it overrides it to 2. It does not happen like that. As soon as the first condition becomes true, it exits the statement and provides an output. So to correct this, what we need to do is we need to change our order of the case when clauses that we have written and make this as the second statement. And for the st first statement, we need to check all the conditions. So our first statement is now going to check salary is greater than 50,000, higher date is greater than 1st January 2016, then set it to 2. So only those records will be checked for this, checked for this condition, which do not satisfy the first condition. So if higher date is not greater than 1st January 2016, then the case statement will come and evaluate this condition and set it to 1. And this is what is going to give us the correct output. So now we have identified four logical errors and corrected them as well. But there is still one more logical error present in this SQL query and we are still not getting the correct output. Are you able to identify that error? If you are able to identify that error, then please put it down in the comments below and tell us how you think we can fix it. You will find the SQL for the sample tables and the SQL statement in the description below. So you can use that and play around with the query and try to figure out what is that last one mistake that we were not able to identify in this video. I hope the video was useful. If you would like to see more of these kinds of videos, then please do like the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel and we would be making more such videos. Thanks again for watching. Goodbye.